Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. Welcome back to Outlaws and Gunslingers. We are Ooh. moving on. <laughs> and then, yeah, we are a few days away from Halloween. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. And I think this is the end. Three more days till Halloween. Silver Shamrock. The worst Halloween movie ever made. I've never seen it. What is it? I think it's Halloween 3. The only movie with Mike Myers. Oh, in Season it. of the Witch? Yeah, it was garbage. Never saw a lot it. of people uh, like it. Yeah, they say it's uh, actually underrated, but uh, never seen, I don't think I've even saw it. You have. I don't think I've even saw 3, 4, 5, <laughs> or any of them, besides the newer ones. H2O, I think, was when I started watching them again. And then you watched Resurgence, or what was it called? Resurrect? Resurrection, yeah. With, uh, um... I got you all in check! Booyah! Booyah! What's his name? Was that the one where they... What's his name? Where they had the game show... Yeah, in the, in not, the house. Not a game show. It was a reality show. Reality well, TV. Same thing. What the, what the hell is the guy's name? Uh, Busta Rhymes. Yeah, Busta Rhymes. Was it Busta? Busta, yeah. And L O Cool J was an H two O. He's like, Mama said, knock you out. And Michael Myers was like, no, nope. <laughs> no, nope. knock you out. Yeah, good stuff. I don't know what that what uh, that has to do with our episode right now. Oh, nothing. I think this, this guy might even be uh, scarier than Michael Myers. Who? Eddie Bentz. Oh, that's who. We were, that's who this episode is about. Uh -oh. And I think this is our last episode on um, 1930s era gangsters. Uh oh, what does that mean? So um, looks like we're moving closer and closer to <gasps> the mafia. Number one, a bunch of Italians, a bunch of names we can't pronounce. <laughs> and then we're gonna go, oh, man. These guys can't even pronounce <laughs> names like Lucchese. <laughs> Names. Can't pronounce names yeah. like the right. Chansey. Now you guys don't got the whole F bomb thing, how we're swearing so much. What else are your excuses going to be? Right. It's probably a lot. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think the last one of the 1930s, Eddie Bentz, and with uh, 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 I think uh, not as well known. I think I think we kind of put all of our cookies in a bunch in the 1930s. We did everybody that was popular in our first five episodes. Eh, and no. then the last like seven are people nobody even heard That's of. So good though, <laughs> you're learning some good stuff. That's good. I'm not saying I'm not. Good I'm not disappointed. But people, good people are probably like, who the hell are they ever going to do one about somebody we know? Oh, I'm oh, sorry that we're not catering to. We're going to do something about somebody we know. To the mainstream names that are told nonstop. How many times right. have you heard a uh, Babyface Nelson story? But even the, the 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 mainstream ones, they don't even know the stories of them either. So. Right. Whatever, guys. Okay. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. we'll be moving on to the 40s. Jeez. I don't think there's many in the 40s, to be honest with you. Um, 50s, we got a couple of uh, the old greaser gangs in that kind of era there coming up. That'll and be then, fun. Um, the 50 cars, you get the chicken when they, they're driving off a cliff, see who right. jumps out first and all that good stuff. I don't know if we have any stories mm -hmm. like that. But if you ever watched. What was that movie? The movie was called Heavenly Kid. Was it Heavenly Kid? Yes. You ever seen Sometimes They Come Back? I did not, but it's like three movies now. Sometimes they come back or... Sometimes they come back again. Again, and, and then, then they yeah. always come back or something. Yeah, like that. But the first one was good. Yeah, because... bad. And the rest were TV. Oh, the first one was a TV movie, and then the rest went straight video. You ever seen Suzy Q? Suzy! With the one with uh, the dead Ray girl? Lota? No, the dead girl. No. That was Karina Karina. Oh. Karina oh. Karina! Yeah, there's Suzy Q, too. Who was that? Oh, Curly Sue. Curly <laughs> Sue. That's not even Ray Liotta. No. <laughs> Ray Liotta is Karina Karina. <laughs> yes. With uh, Whoopi. Was it Whoopi? Yeah. I she's, think it was Whoopi. Yeah, she's the housemaid chick, and the daughter doesn't talk because the mom died. And right. Then, and they say America's racist. Right. We just literally put out a, a mainstream movie with a black and a white person. Uh, <laughs> bodyguard. The bodyguard. Kevin Costner and uh, old crackhead. <laughs> old crackhead Whitney. <laughs> what does this have to do with any of this? Anyways. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 1950s. <laughs> Suzy Q, though. The, um, no, you never seen the movie Suzy Q? It's like in the 50s. She dies in a car accident on the bridge. I don't. And then something happens. She ends up coming back no. as a ghost. So the kid don't know that she's a ghost yet. And then, like, falls in love with her and no. all this stuff. No. Has to do something oh, to make her so go to raft. Ghost Dad. That was with um, Bill Cosby. Pedo. He, who knows what he did in that movie? He's a ghost. Nobody could see him. So, who knows all the people he was raping in between scenes that the kids didn't know about? So, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Bill. Dang. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot to look forward to before we get into the 60s. Uh, maybe we'll crank out a couple other 60s criminals and then get to the mafia. Not really sure, to be honest. 
Oh, we're going to have to slow it down because uh, we might end this. We might end this whole um, podcast on the mafia. Maybe we'll do everybody else and then end with the mafia. What? Oh, end it on it? Yeah, I think so. That sounds The mafia fantastic. will be the last um, right. series or whatever we do. I and think. trust us. Uh, not trust Because after us. we do, I mean, after we do the mafia, you can't really come back. But don't worry, fellas. You can't really upstage the mafia afterwards, right? There's already a. Uh, a spinoff after Outlaws and Gunslingers, so we got you covered for the next, at least another year. So. I don't think there is, but... There uh, is a spinoff. I don't think there so is. I don't think there is. Don't listen to this guy. He can't even complete a Lee and Corey episode. Yes, it's called, I'm going to give you... It's called, I'm going to give you... It's called Outlaws and Knife Slingers. <laughs> <laughs> People who murdered specifically with knives? Oh, sure. Not specifically with knives. <laughs> What's the point? No. Yeah, but no spinoff, guys. Sorry. There is a spinoff. It's not happening. Don't don't believe this guy. He don't. He's not gonna put in the work. He ain't Kevin Hart. Well, either way, then don't count on that one, guys. But uh, I don't worry. The listeners are like, dude, you guys ain't real podcasters. We don't care. Right? Like you guys, <laughs> you guys are on a history podcast right now, and you guys are five, six, seven minutes in, and you haven't even got to the subject yet. <laughs> You've been talking about movies and Karina Karina. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't bang and bang show, damn it. <laughs> hey, we do what I want. Right. Do what I want. Right. This is a way to get our show over on another <laughs> <laughs> we'll do we'll do half hour we'll of do, us. We'll, and do, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do forty five minutes of our show and then the last fifteen on something else. No, not even that. We'll just at the end of the show. Oh yeah. Go to Wikipedia well, hey, and check out Eddie Bent. Eddie Bent's killed a bunch of people, you know, wrapped a couple banks. Right. You want to hear the fourth story. Go to uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and this, yes, Eddie Bentz is what we're doing this on. Never as famous as uh, some of these other guys. As is the last pe- couple people we've done. Obviously not as famous as Machine Gun Kelly, Babyface Nelson, or any of those other guys. But Eddie supposedly never liked cheap publicity, so I think it was all good for him. He seems like right. he, so far he seems like he's smart. He's not uh, one... Hopefully, we'll see once we get in the story. Well, he's, he's probably not like, one of those idiots that are right. um, doing stupid things to attract attention. All, all of his workers come up to him and be like, Sir Eddie, how come we're not all in the news? We want to be highlighted. We want to be like, like no, listen no, here, Grasshopper. He's like uh, from uh, we don't Goodfellas. Want he's like, you know why those guys go to jail? Right. Because they want to go to jail, Sharon yes. or Karen. <laughs> yeah, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They wanted to get away from their wives. That's why. <laughs> Seems like he uh, kept his stuff under control. Why be? Why put yourself why be all in attention? Out there anyways, right? Why put yourself in, I mean, in you're a public already, eye? You're already giving attention to yourself by robbing banks, so why do it more? Right, and you put yourself Stupid. in a public eye like that. Where, you know, well, rob, rob your banks and still wear the hole right. in the jeans and, mm-hmm. and be an Adam Sandler. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Make your millions and then still wear uh, baggy gym shorts to talk shows. Right. So, you know, why not? Well, J. Edgar Hoover. What do you do? The most the, the famous J. Edgar Hoover wrote of Eddie Bentz. He preferred peace and quiet, his books and his art, and good companions. He also said he was the shrewdest, most resourceful, intelligent, and dangerous bank robber in existence. Mm. So uh, all these other guys, Dillinger, all these other guys uh, made J. Edgar Hoover look like an idiot. So that tells you what uh, we're in for quite the story for old Mr. Eddie Bentz here, apparently, huh? Right, and uh, J. Edgar Hoover, I mean, Hoover, Hoover. <laughs> Hoover. Uh, he maybe could have been a better FBI guy if it was like the 1900s. You know, not covering things up and, you know, doing <laughs> dirty shit on the side. But yeah. I think the whole, he got, he got a bad, not a bad rap because he was a dirty, dirty cop, obviously. He's a dirty cop. But uh, just a startup, a startup branch of the law enforcement which will become the most powerful branch besides the CIA, but that's even law enforcement. I don't think CIA would be law enforcement, right? Different things, but yeah. Intelligence. Right. FBI is more the investigative side. Until they decide not to investigate. Yeah, well. Hey, uh, what years. was this? We had a report on this school shooter seven months ago. Yeah, we'll let him roam. Oh, what's this? We had a report on... Uh, a Republican that's... Uh, he scammed $2,000 out of his last uh, elections... Campaign. Right. What's this? We have reports of uh, high-level targets in uh, targeted by Al Qaeda. Uh, what? Yeah. Right. We'll just let that go on by we, the wayside. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We need uh, all available units. We need you guys all training at a there base is, in Colorado right now. <laughs> no, there is a uh, school board meeting taking place. Right. 
<laughs> and there's an angry parent. We're gonna need everybody involved. Get choppers. We ready. need all the resources on Stat. on Dale Smith from right Woodsboro, uh, <laughs> Connecticut. Stat. Stat. I hate that word. Stat. <laughs> we need it. Stat. Stat. Talking about Edward Bentz. Yes, we are. <laughs> His full name, Edward Willem. Eventually, we'll talk about him. I swear. Right, right now, Edward Willem Bentz. Wilhelm. Uh, yeah, Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Edward Wilhelm Bentz, the son of German immigrants. Second mm-hmm. of June, eighteen ninety-five, the day he came on this earth, in Pipestone, Minnesota. Oh, he's a Minnesota boy, eh? A little Pipestone boy, huh? Bentz on at least one occasion listed his birthplace as Pipestone, South Dakota, but there's no town. Of Pipestone, South Dakota. However, 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 Pipestone, Minnesota is less than seven miles from South Dakota. Yeah, the little kid was just a little confused, apparently, right? right? 1895. Were there were they a state then? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Uh, when he was about nine, his father, a house mover, was killed by a runaway horse. Mm. Dang, those dang runaway horses, man. Well, his mother Rose took Eddie and his eight siblings to Tacoma, Washington. Can you imagine that? Getting killed by a running horse. Just come in and splattered you. Just trampled you and his hoof went straight through your brain. It probably wasn't even a trample as far as the uh, amount of force that when he hit him. He probably flew fucking... Oh, shit. He probably flew 15, 20 feet in the air. I don't know. uh, Seth Bullock's kid got trampled and he didn't throw Yeah, he got trampled. Yeah, that's even worse when you get hoofs come down on you. Violent. (laughs) Right. No, thanks. Well, his mother Rose took Eddie and his eight siblings to Tacoma, Washington, clear across state. Well, middle, halfway across state. I mean, um, country. Where she provided him with a respectable middle-class upbringing in a large home aided by her husband's life insurance. Oh, okay. Wow. And her operation of a theater and a boarding house. So she came and made her own money, plus got a little bit of a right. settlement from old uh, so, old horse, right. horse uh, stomper. So they moved guy. out. Moved out of uh, old Minnesota and headed west to Tacoma. To Tacoma. Tacoma. Tacoma, Washington. Lou Eddie took the crime early, stealing his playmate's bicycles, his, his playmate's cigarettes. <laughs> his playmate's cigarettes. Jeez. <laughs> what? He's stealing his and playmate's. And his playmate's scrap metal. His, their bicycles and cigarettes. I don't, Why this guy I don't scrap metal? I don't. I don't think they're all exclusively as playmates. They like, just, hey. just, just, just the bicycles. <laughs> right. I'm like, hey, guys, check out this scrap metal pile I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang, Johnny, that's a hell of a scrap metal pile. <laughs> it is. I don't know. We're in Tacoma, Washington. I don't know what kind of accents they got out there. but <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, hey, little Eddie said to Johnny, about what time do you guys leave for church on Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Scrap metal mine. How about I'll take those cigarettes? He used to call them scrap metal Eddie. How does he get the cigarettes? And he just like stole beat him, him up and stole them from him. It's not they're not the playmates. It's not playmates. It's the bicycles. Then he was stealing cigarettes and scrap metal on the side. <laughs> anyway, uh, when he was about sixteen, he was shipped off to the state training school in Chelalis, Chehalis, Chehalis, C H E H A L I S, Chehalis, Chehalis, Chehalis. If you hear me, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm going to the state training school. And Chihalis. What you going on there, Lil Eddie? Burglary charge. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> Get out of this. I'm going to do what everybody else during my era <laughs> right. does. Because he does. these are the worst guarded prisons and uh, penitentiaries. Well, he's only 16, ever. so it's, I don't even know if it's a prison. It's like a little. Well, it's a training school, right. clearly. Right. Boarding house, pretty much. Boarding house. Boarding anyway, school. he escaped the school. He spent his youth as a non particularly successful burglar. <laughs> After a nineteen twelve arrest for auto theft, he escaped from the Tacoma jail. Jeez. But was caught again and ended up at the state penitentiary at Walla Walla. <laughs> Walla Walla. Jeez. All right, so let's take a look back. <clears throat> Sixteen years old or earlier than that, he was stealing bicycle cigarettes and scrap metal. Mm-hmm. Sixteen years old. His mama was like, You gotta go. You ain't gonna end up like your daddy. Get <laughs> run over by a horse. <laughs> He's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> There's no horses. Right. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. How about the state training school? I think he got sent there because he was on a burglary charge. So they didn't go to, he didn't go to jail. So they sent him to training school. I was like, well, he's 16. Maybe he's got a little bit of time left. We can uh, train him a little bit more. And, and his uh, mama was like, I'm trying the best I can. Daddy's been gone. Right? It's like 19... I'm trying to run a boarding house. 1908 or some shit. Trying to run a boarding house and a theater. This boy, 
This boy is up no good. He's up no good. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, there is a story that was probably started by Bence that he talked his way out of Walla Walla by declaring his intention to go to Victoria, British Columbia, and start uh, sign up to fight in the World War One with the Canadian Army. Wait why, a minute. Why would they let him uh, get out of jail to go to the Canadian Army? He's not even a Canadian citizen. Right, and they would have to transport him to the border anyway and turn him over to the Canadian Army. Well, who knows? People are in this day are idiots. Probably just let him walk out the building. Oh. He said, don't worry. He said he's going to uh, British Columbia. He said he's going in a row. Don't worry. <laughs> he's fine. Don't worry. Yeah, these 15 other guys they said they're going to. Mm. <laughs> well, in later years, he claimed that various bits of shrapnel and old gunshot wounds were the result of his fight against the Kaiser. Both claims are highly unlikely. Oh, this guy's a liar? He's a liar. He's a wannabe criminal. Right. At this point. At this point. He's mm. a little small-time, little mm. uh, bicycle and cigarette robber. Well, how well, fuck. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of conflicting information going on here. Right. Well, we know that the United States entered World War One in April of 1917. Mm-hmm. We all know this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in June of that year, Bench registered for the draft from his cell at the penitentiary okay. for, for Canada. No. This is he registered for the United States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. What? Oh, there's a, there was just a story about He him. told a story that right. he said that he wanted to go... He got out by saying he was going to go join Canadian Army. But what is known for sure, that he actually registered for the draft. In 1917. In I mean, his uh, cell. Yeah. Yeah, in June of 1917, a couple months after the United States officially entered. Right. There's no known evidence to support his claim that he was released from there to fight for a different country. Anywhere which his own country. Right. Was fighting itself. That's what I'm saying. In addition... The 1920 United States Census shows Bent still residing at the prison as of January 5th, 1920. This guy's a damn liar. The whole time he's lying. He's a sociopath. Jeez. Well, what is undisputed is that while he was in jail, Eddie learned a new burglary technique called weeding. The idea was to break into a retail establishment and walk out with a few items at a time whose absence wouldn't be noted. Right. Weed them out a little bit, you know, take a little bit here and there. Yeah, you go to well too many times, though. Mm, That's true. Eddie went to the Midwest, where they all go. Right. Racked up arrests in Illinois and Missouri. Seen that before. But charges were all dismissed. Okay. That happened a lot. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yes, we've seen. Right. Throughout his career, Eddie was frequently arrested, but did very little to jail time. As we've seen. He was picked up by the Seattle police twice in the 1930s as a fugitive from justice, which he was. But he was turned loose both times. Mm. So, what is going on here? His little... He's just a petty little criminal that uh, is getting arrested here and there, and they're just and the like, government was trying to crack down on all shit like that. It's the only way I can think. And they're just picking up anybody that has any charge. I mean, they have much. a warrant. Well, plus this is Seattle, Washington, so who knows what the hell they got going on here. Right. You know, so. Well, from his misspent youth until 1936, Eddie was sentenced to 34 and a half years oh by various jurisdictions around the country and actually served only seven years due to early parole or release at the minimum of a sentence. Wow. He also jumped bail frequently and successfully talked his way out of accusations. Wow. So this guy is just... In and out of jail. Right. Eddie worked his way up from nighttime retail burglaries and car theft to breaking into banks and post offices at night, cutting into safes with a 150-pound torch. But bank robbery was changing. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, safe crackers had done it at night. But by the 1920s, however, however, faster automobiles and better roads has led to the invention of the getaway uh, car. Oh, yes, it did. So they don't need it in the middle of the night no mm-hmm. more. They can just come in and while the bank's open, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta sit there and spend two hours trying to cut into a safe. Nope, you just spend twenty seconds pointing a gun in somebody's face. They open the safe, right? And then then don't believe them when they say it's on a time lock. Oh, then like, you shoot. No. Then you shoot their partner in the head. Right? Is it on time lock? No, no, I believe it's about right. <laughs> I think time will just expire. Yeah, I think I can open it right now. <laughs> Uh, by one account, Eddie was fed up lugging that heavy safe cracking torch around. Obviously, he was quoted as saying, I'm through. Right. From now on, I'll take these joints in daylight during business hours. Right. By another account, it was a matter of prestige. He told an FBI agent, I decided to become a yeg, a mm. bank robber, you know? They're the uh, aristocrat. Is it aristocracy? Aristocracy? Ar- arist- aristocracy? Aristocracy? Aristocracy. Aristocracy of the criminal profession. The wrist saying they're the they're aristocats. The, they're the wrist the rich guys of the uh Oh the aristocat, man. Yeah, aristocat is rich. No, aristocat is uh it's like a low level thing. And the it? aristocrats? No, the aristocrats. The aristocrats are high uh, profile like rich people, man. Is that aristocrat is? Yeah. 
Right. So yeah, he's saying the bank robbers. There's a they're the, they're the high profile. They're the the um, what's the word I'm looking for here? They're the aristocrats of the criminal profession. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess. I don't know why. I mean, bank robbers. What else? What are you yeah, gonna, but they never what really are you gonna come be, up. What are you gonna be like? Uh, they old, never really come up with the, that amount of money. You gonna, what are you gonna be like Wilbur Underhill Jr. last week and uh, rob a gas station of sixteen dollars and eighty three cents, sixty four cents, whatever the hell it was. Then crash your car and have them tow it and then fix it. I mean, the way I see it here, it looks like uh, illegal activity of drugs and stuff. If you're gonna get more money, but were they really have for drugs back in then? Eddie minimized risk by keeping his bank robberies down to three a year. Oh, good for him. After carefully researching his targets he, to determine how much... quota he had to hit every year. Well, uh, at least he did his research, right? It took a while, it looked like three, four months to... Uh, right. Like any heist would do. Right. After carefully researching his targets to determine how much book there was for the bank... Well, see, that's a smart way to do it. He spent time in the public library studying documents about a bank's assets and liabilities and bond inventories. So this dude's studying how banks work. He could probably become a banker and... And have a legitimate career, but he's like, I'm just gonna do it. No. It's like he's like um, uh, the Mark Wahlberg character, and um, <laughs> what was that? Um, the other guys. Yeah, he's like, that's when I learned ballet. He was like, you learned ballet? He was like, yeah, <laughs> I learned it to uh, make fun of the little queers down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the little dance. I'm like, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, that's hilarious. That was a good movie. The other it guys. Was. I heard there's gonna be other guys too, but should be. What are you gonna do, right? Anyhow, okay, study of documents, right. bank assets, liabilities. Right. And he developed a formula to use this data to determine how much cash would be in the bank at a particular time. Look, at this is probably one of the smartest uh, going uh, to rob banks that we've seen so far. Right. Uh, a quote from Eddie says, hmm. see, see, here. a lot of those mugs never had been in a public library. Talking about his fellow bank robbers. It pays to be educated. Well, I mean, so far he's right, I guess, right? Right now, yeah. Oh, see, look at him. He's even more smart because he'd also pose as a possible investor in the bank or as a businessman thinking of opening an account and wangle a guided tour of all the bank's security features. All right. Oh, he's like, man, I got all this money I want to put in your guys' yeah. bank. I need to know where all your uh, see, this is, security guards are. I this need is to like know. a movie now. Right. This is like what they would do in it's a movie. Like some Ocean's Eleven shit. And there's, movie, and there's like music playing in the background. All right. As it, you know, mm-hmm. Ben Affleck's going around and or uh, George Clooney's. Was Brad it? Pitt. Brad Pitt, George, George Clooney, Clooney, Matt yeah. Dillon. Was that playing Matt in that Damon. Too? Matt Damon, not yeah, Dillon. Matt Damon. Don't ever talk about Matt Dillon like he does <laughs> that or anything. Matt Dillon. <laughs> Matt Dillon. Yeah, but he'd get all the little tours of the bank, and then he'd also size up the bank personnel to determine which tellers might resist or get hysterical. He says, I'm a big farmerish looking fellow, sort of, e- sort of easy going, like to laugh and talk and be chummy with people, and that doesn't match up with their ideas about criminals, he explained. Mm-hmm. He was also adept at laundering bonds, which involved mysterious overseas transactions and let his accomplices take the cash from a holdup. Oh, well, nice. he took the bonds, which he managed to liquidate for 70 cents on the dollar. So he's still in the bonds. He's like, I'm not even going to get caught with the marked money. Right. You guys can have these bonds. I'll sell them to you for 70 cents per dollar. I and mean, he's still going to make money because oh, yeah. he stole it. Right. It's all, it's all profit. It's all profit. All profit. They're, yeah, whoever's buying it is like, freak, yeah. Nine times out of ten, it's another criminal buy in them. So, and all they're going to do is put it in their own account to make them uh, uh, stack up interest. So, all right, smart stuff right there. Well, smart, smart guy. When Eddie wasn't robbing banks, oh, what do you do? I want to, yeah. What is this dating game? Right. Tell me, like, well, what do you like to do when you're not robbing banks? Contestant number one. He's like, <laughs> well, first off, <laughs> <laughs> when not robbing banks, Eddie enjoyed life, never staying anywhere for long periods of time. And he lived lavishly in hotels and apartments. Mm. He enjoyed playing golf. Okay. He reportedly shot in uh, the low 80s. Okay, pretty decent. He liked coin collecting. <laughs> okay, nerd. Uh, There's times that he goes to, and, and went to museums and looked around. He also liked theaters, okay, a little doesn't, Broadway show. Doesn't like a good theater. Right. And plus, he loved amateur pornography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. No, no. no. Uh, sorry, he did like that too, but. <laughs> amateur photography. 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 Amateur. I mean, I guess I do like more the amateur photography than I do like the, the professional, you know what I mean? Because it's so like amateur p- photography. 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 <laughs> photography. Amateur. Dude, it's just photo photography. Photography. <laughs> I mean, there's something about that, right? I mean, it looks real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
He liked amateur filmmaking mm-hmm. as well as nightclubbing. Well, and this dancing. guy is just a guy of all trades. And, um, <laughs> so this guy is like the rest of you, me, because we love right. doing all of this. Except for nightclubbing. Well, we could. No, yeah. I mean, we could do I don't it. coin collect either. All yeah, right. Or dance. Or play golf in the low 80s. <laughs> right. Or dance. <laughs> and I don't live lavishly in hotels and apartments. No. And I stay lo- places for very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and, I don't he, enjoy, and I don't enjoy life. <laughs> our favorite bank robbers, he's just like us. I do enjoy life. No, he's life. not. He's not just like us. He does nothing that we do. Your favorite celebrities, they walk around with their hands in their pockets, too. <laughs> just like <Yeah>. us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he enjoyed doing uh, everything. Uh, everything that's a Hollywood would, guy. Somebody with money would enjoy right. doing pretty <laughs> right. much anything they want. Really, right. he was excellent. He was an excellent dresser, except when robbing banks. Obviously, right. When he occasionally wore farmers overalls. I mean, it makes sense. Clearly. Why would you uh, dress up in some suits and ties and stuff if you're going to rob a bank? That so way, they're looking for a, a nasty farmer guy when you're dressed up all dapper in suit and tie, right? I believe this guy wasn't really all there. He was like, I guess he was all there, but he was like, hey, I'm about to sh- prove it. He's like proving a point. I can do this, but yet be perceived as this. Like you said, I can go in these banks. They see me as an old farmer guy coming in. So staying out of the public eye, like he right. said. All right. Instead of all these idiots that are running around having, uh, like Bonnie and Clyde, having shootouts in, a, in their hideout. And Idiot. Idiots. Idiots. Well, as an avid reader, he patronized antiquarian booksellers wherever he happened to be and traveled with five trunks which held many valuable books by authors including Voltaire, Casanova, Washington Irvin, Bunyan, Voltaire, isn't it? Voltaire, Voltaire. Monier really pumps my nads, <laughs> <laughs> Bunyan and Stevenson as well as a collection of revolvers, hey. a bulletproof vest and occasionally a machine gun. And occasionally. He was like, was occasionally. Like, no, we'll leave this one behind. Well, we, don't, we don't need the machine gun this time. <laughs> Thuggish in appearance. It's the thuggish rock is bone. The thuggish in appearance, beefy, six foot tall, crinkly reddish hair, hmm. and an ominous looking triangular oh, he a, shaped he patch. Little, he was a little of bluish. Gin- he was a little ginger. Veins. So there uh, now right. you're, uh, the theory of him something having wrong with him uh, is now right. And he got some weird looking veins on his forehead. Uh, bluish broken veins. Broken veins on his forehead. He was amiable, smiling often. Talking out of the side of his mouth. Talking out of the side of his mouth. Like Jim that, Ross. Right? <laughs> That's called Bell's Palsy. It's called Bell's Palsy. <laughs> he was also hospitable and suicidal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he might have been. You never know. No. He was also a hospital and sociable. Sociable. <laughs> and enjoyed organizing <laughs> a family he enjoyed reunion. Enjoyed organizing a family reunion. Right. He's like, He's like you guys. know what I want to do this week? I want to organize a family reunion. Well, we just had one last month. <laughs> so what? Uh, still a reunion. Eddie later estimated he'd pulled off 100 bank robberies during his career, working with various accomplices. I don't know. Can we believe that? With the later, right, I know. This guy is like, <laughs> a known liar already, but <laughs> a damn smart one. <laughs> uh, working with various accomplices, but seldom the same ones twice. Wow. Look at this guy. See, he gets smarter by the time the, the uh, show goes on. Nobody knows exactly which heist he was involved in, but it seems clear that he and George Machine Gun Kelly robbed the first trust and savings bank of Colfax in wow. Washington of seventy-seven thousand in nineteen thirty-two. So That's he's part of, of uh, he's part of Machine Gun's little crew there, huh? Right. He was also suspected of being involved in the two million dollar robbery in Lincoln, Nebraska. No, I remember Eddie Bentz's name in the Machine Gun Kelly episode that we had, and the two million dollar robbery uh, with uh, Harvey Bailey, I believe, right? Right. Yeah, in, ni- yeah. in 1930, and bank robberies in Port Orchard and Bremerton, Washington. So uh, he made some big scores, if that's true. Well, basically, this guy was—he was a freelancer. Yeah, he wasn't on—he wasn't on the level of Machine Gun Kelly and all right. those guys, but he was. Well, he'd go in on some scores with them. He was like, "You guys are about to take two right. million. I'm, in, I'm in." Right. He was just off on it. Yeah, he's a freelancer, man. Right. He's just everywhere. Wherever, he, wherever anyway. he can find a score to participate in. And laying much. low in between. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, between golfing, going to theaters, amateur well, that's photography. What, that's, what, that's what laying low is. I get like, Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 1931, he was living in Tacoma. Yes. Went back to went Tacoma. Back to old Tacoma, huh? There, he married an 18-year-old Verna Freemark. Oh, this guy's like 35 here. Right. Who he had met in Chicago as a teenage runaway from South Milwaukee. South Milwaukee. So he met her in Chicago. I was like, he's like, well, I tell you what, let's go back to Tacoma where yep. I grew up. Yep, yep. We'll live a life of luxury. 
She's like, okay, I'll do anything for you. Mm-hmm. Anything for you, Eddie. Eddie? Eddie, now 36, 36, prepared to retire with his young bride on his ill-gotten gains. He's like, we're going to retire with all this stolen money. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? All this illegitimate money that I did nothing to deserve. Oh, look at this guy. He gets smarter by the day. Right. Well, he proceeded to work only as a consultant to other bank robbers Mm -hmm. who would pay him in a percentage of the take. Nice. He's like, I'll tell you how to do it, but... Man, he's still risking it, though. These guys can easily write him out. He's an accomplice. Right. He ain't going to get as long a sentence as these guys would, though. Right. He's like, man, all I said, this is what I would do. This is what I would do. Right. I just taught him how to case the place and plan it. Actually, I think the planner would probably get just as much. Right, because he's... Yeah. Planning a bank robbery. You can't do that. Right. Um, Eddie and Verna spent their summers on the shores of Lake Michigan in Long Beach, Indiana, then a popular hoodlum retreat for the likes of Ma Barker, Legs Diamond, and a father, Philip so Coughlin. He, he really couldn't get away from the whole scene. All right. I mean, why would you? Right. That's where they went. It was just, that's his kind. Right. Um, the Benses, 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 yeah, Benses, told the priest, uh, Father Philip Coughlin, that uh, they couldn't have children and wondered if he could help them adopt. I was going to say to help them uh can you help us conceive, Father? Can you help us conceive, please. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, but it's a couple kids down right. the road. I mean, there's always kids running around here. It was there, 1933, that he was approached by a fresh-faced kid named Lester Gillis. Oh, you guys know who this is. Whom the world would come to know as Babyface yes, Nelson. Fresh Face Nelson. <laughs> Nelson aspired to be a big-time bank robber mm-hmm. and asked a semi-retired Yig. To plan one for him. He was like, please, I want to do it. I know you do it. You're the best to do it. This Come is the best on, way Eddie. to get me started. Come on, Eddie. Everybody says that you are the best best one ever. Right. Eddie was like, I oblige. I oblige. Locating a good bank to knock off in Grand Haven, Michigan. Oh, Grand Haven, Michigan. We all know the baby face Nelson uh, one that he right. robbed here. And arranging details such as Tommy Guns and Barrel of Roofing Nails. To throw down on the street to slow down for swears. <laughs> Jeez. For swears. <laughs> My pursuers. Yeah, look at that. They're like a, <laughs> so like they're a like, spike strip before we'll uh, they became some, strips. We'll get you some Tommy guns so you can just throw out some lead right quick. And if they do try to chase you, guess what? There's about a thousand nails in the road. Scatter these bad boys, and guess what? They, they can't go very far on flat tires. Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And they ain't no police department for miles. Mm-hmm. Well, against his better judgment, Eddie got talked into playing an active role in a robbery that went very badly wrong. <laughs> oh, wow. Donald Trump wrote this one. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Including a getaway car driver who got away alone before the robbers emerged from the bank. Oh, no. An armed citizen taking on the robbers. Babyface Nel- baby Nelson spraying rounds of automatic weapons fire. Hostages falling off the running boards of moving vehicles. And some fumbled carjackings. Oh, no. Holy hell! What are you getting? Oh up? no, Eddie! Come on! It dude. was just like a, a I'm free disappointed for in you now, right. man. Can well, you imagine that? Uh, that uh, hellish scene there. You got uh, or Babyface Nelson spraying his spraying Tommy, his Tommy gun, gun, gun everywhere. The crowd. You got hostages running, falling off of cars. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, man! Oh no! Jeez! Well, Eddie had managed to escape. But he was hot for the right. first time in years. Because up till now, he hadn't been really wanted by right. nobody. Now they know. Now they know. Mm, now they know old. Now they know who Eddie Benz is. He got that unwanted uh, publicity that he clearly didn't want. So he retreated to Portland. Ah, not that Portland. Mm-mm. Nope, this one's in Maine. Mm-hmm. All the way on the other side of the country. Right. Uh, he bought a large home. Why does it have to be large? Who cares if it's a large home? Because well, he got to show off his wealth. Right. He bought a very large home, and he went legit, well, he serving as legit an owner, president, and general sales manager of Ultra Products, a toy company. Hey, this dude started a toy company. <laughs> nice. I want that guy around my kids. Soon he was on the road selling toys. It was on toy business oh. that he noticed uh, <laughs> Caledonia. Good evening, sir. What kind of business are you on, toy? <laughs> I'm on the toy business. <laughs> toy business? <laughs> I'm on the toy business. <laughs> it was on toy business that he noticed that the Caledonia National Bank at Danville, Vermont. Oh, geez. And he liked what he saw. Mm-hmm. He's like, now this is crazy. Did you know? Oh, never mind. <laughs> mm. Never mind. I'll fix it for you. All right. <laughs> and when Alter Products needed an injection of capital... He went back to his old ways. Of course he did. He was like, we need money for this failing adventure uh, right. that we got going on here, and there's only one way I know how to get out of that. I mean, I mean you guys are back. They practically begged for it. Oh, jeez, Eddie. What are you doing? I had high hopes for you, bud. Right. Well, his luck began to run out like they all do. 
The FBI was after him as bank robbery had become a federal crime now, thanks to his partners yeah. that he's been helping here. Uh, because he was so hot, he and Verna had to give up their flamboyant lifestyle and lie low, avoiding old haunts such as nightclubs, golf courses, and antiquarian antiquarian booksellers. Wow. Oh, man, a guy can't even get his fix of uh, antique books. Wow. Jeez. Well, 22-year-old Verna. You can't do that with 22-year-old chick. Yeah, right. 22-year-old Verna, she's like... I'm, I'm done. bored, man. I'm so used to pottying. Mm. And, uh-uh. She's bored by life on the lamb, and she leaves him and goes uh, oh, goes home to South Milwaukee. Oh, no. once she did that. Oh, guess what? Know. There, FBI oh. agents grilled her, and she made one slip, revealing a place in New York where he had once stayed, a slip that led to his 1936 wow. arrest. Wow. Come on, Verna. Can't be doing this. Wow. She tried, though. She did. Well. She tried, though. She didn't tell him on purpose, though. Eddie confessed to the uh, Caledonia bank job in Vermont mm. and the botched robbery in Grand Haven, Michigan. Yes. But he refused to name any accomplices. Oh, good for him. He told Angels he hoped he'd go to Alcatraz, <laughs> as all my friends are there. All my friends say Alcatraz is the prison that you want in. <laughs> right. Well, Eddie got his very wish. He did. He went to Alcatraz. But boasted that he had millions hidden in bonds, which he'd retrieve when he got out. Okay. That's what he's saying. He's like, right. up? that don't matter. I come here. I'm only going to spend a few years here. I got right. millions there waiting has, for me, baby. Yeah, there has been some mystery about Eddie's later years. Mystery, which it's always. Mm. Several sources say Eddie died in prison and so was never able to get his those, those bonds that he claimed that he had stashed away. But, but however. Records show he was paroled from Alcatraz in 1948 and sent to serve time in Massachusetts until 54, wow. then served time in Wisconsin until 62. Damn. Well, after a parole violation that same year, damn, so he went to jail in 1936, spent um, 26 years there Wow. Well, in various prisons. Well, after a parole violation that same year, he was taken to a federal prison in Sandstone, Minnesota. Mm. Okay. So why... Uh, Hold on here. There's been some mystery about his later years. Several sources say he died in prison, but clearly we have it on record that he got sent to these and was paroled. Well, died in prison. So what happens after he was paroled here? Did he go back? Well, we'll find out. But but in 1967, it appears he was a free man living back home in Tacoma. Mm. His death certificate says he died of heart failure at his home at 5411 South. Why is there mystery surrounding it? All right. Late on Halloween night. Hey, this is. (laughs) Hey, this actually worked out to. uh... And I just got a a text on my phone with uh, my. Jason Voorhees. This actually worked out as a ho- This is technically a Halloween episode. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, man! Wow. <laughs> wow. So he died on Halloween night, 1979, at the age 85 at his home. That's 5411 South Thompson Street. The death certificate perhaps alluding to uh, Eddie's brief stint as a legitimate businessman in Portland, Maine, lists Eddie's occupation as salesman and his... And his kind of business or industry as specialty advertising. Huh. So I'm confused why they say there's mystery that he died in prison when clearly there's evidence right here with his death certificate and everything that right. clearly says he died in his home. Right. But hey, guys, another... Um, 85, though. Right. I was going to say, another another uh, infamous bank robber that actually made it. Uh, he lived a triple life. Well, he didn't kill anybody. Yeah. This guy didn't murder nobody. He murdered nobody. But he's still uh, he's he's number one of those he's part of the triple life club. Well, that goes to show he can you, he made just as much money as these murderers. He didn't have to kill nobody. Yeah, but he was present at uh, a couple murder. robberies that people Especially, got murdered. Yeah, so with a, uh, baby face just spraying yeah. his AK or uh, his uh, Tommy gun, Tommy everywhere. gun everywhere. Ridiculous. I mean, should have known not to not to get involved with that psycho guy. Right. By this time, this guy had already done like. Six robberies where he killed people before they did the Grand Haven uh, robbery. So what the hell was he thinking? It's true. Jeez. Come on, Eddie. You got to be smarter than that, man. He tried. He, well, he was for a minute. For a minute. Probably the smartest guy in terms of um, planning so bank robberies and stuff right. like that that so we've far. seen. So, so far, yeah. But as usual, they try to go legit. It doesn't work. They just can't. It doesn't work. He's like, hey, man, I was in this town and I saw a bank. <laughs> oh. <laughs> going to rob it. All right. Gonna that was his own it. fault there, dummy. It was probably too easy, though. He was like, no, this is so easy. I can right. get away with this. I can do this. This is last time. Be all right. Well, his biggest mistake, uh, obviously, was letting his old wife get unhappy. They could have moved to, like, a 
smaller town and right. still went out and, and partied and did some stuff. Right. Kept her happy. Right. Instead, oh. no, nope, she had to run her mouth. No. He's never no. getting married, guys. No. It'll be the death of all men. No. Don't get married as a 40-year-old to a 20-year-old. Right. Well, that, yeah, especially <laughs> that. Or ever. Right. No, well, Eddie Bentz. Eddie Bentz. That's going to do it for Outlaws and Gunslingers. Eddie Bentz and wrapping up the 1930s criminals, outlaws, bank robbers, murderers, and all of the above. Um, not sure what we're going to be back for next week because we've got to do a little bit of research. I don't think there's too many 1940s um, specific gangsters because a lot of these guys we've obviously seen. Right. They did some crimes in the 40s, too, so I think we probably covered all of the 40s, to be honest with you. Um, we'll see what we got there, but we definitely got some 50s stuff, gangs. Mm-hmm. We're going to get back to gangs here, because gangs are going to become very popular again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we're working our way towards the end of this podcast, so to speak, uh, with the Mafia. That'll be our that'll be our last hurrah, and we don't know when it's going to gonna be. It could be two months from now. It could be eight months from now. We don't know. So gonna be we wild. don't know. Uh, the, uh, we don't know. The Mafia shit's going to be a while. Well, the Mafia stuff's going to take a while. I'm just saying how long it's going to take to get to there. Oh, don't, don't rush. We don't know. Don't rush good stuff. Man. We don't know. With that being said, if you guys uh, <laughs> are a smidget of entertained by uh, what we did in the beginning and for pretty much throughout this whole episode of just <laughs> random nonsense talking. You go check out our other show, the Bang and Dang Show, wherever you get your podcast, where we do the same thing, except for it's all about any kind of topic there is, sports, music, politics, anything and everything. So uh, if you guys like that kind of stuff, go check us out there and our other podcast. Uh, right. And if this is the first time listening to this show, this is usually not how it is. We're usually down to business with the guy. That we're talking about. Oh, that's not true. Subject. Yeah, more more than what we were today. Yeah, well, this is why we're it dip- a little more. This is why it differs from all the yeah. other shows that yeah. people do about this stuff because yeah. we we're we banter back and forth right. and do stupid stuff like right. that. We're not just. Uh, well, he robbed banks <laughs> and he went to jail. He went to jail. Right. But if you guys are fans of wrestling, oh. we are on week one oh eight of our Monday Night Watch Along, which we call it, where we went back from the very first episode of Monday Nitro, WCW Monday Nitro, and watched the main events of both Raw and Nitro. We did. And uh, we kind of see in our own minds who actually, and this is the first time we're watching it since we were kids way back. Right. And uh, we're at the end of 97 right now currently. Right. And we'll, we'll decide who won the real one Monday Night Wars in our minds, according to Bang and Dang, that is. Yeah. So uh, that's the Monday Night Wars along wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back next week for another stellar episode stellar. of Outlaws and Gunslingers. We are the Mouth of Michiganders with 